Hello everyone, it's Dr. Meyer here with part one of a video series for you on sequences. Let's start with melodic sequences. What is a sequence? There are two types of sequences, melodic and harmonic, or chordal sequence. The focus of this video will be the melodic sequence. All sequences in general feature a repeated pattern at a new pitch level after an initial statement of a musical idea. In general, melodic sequences are used for unification or developing melodic motives throughout a piece. Whereas harmonic sequences can be used for progression and also modulation. In this video, I'm going to focus on diatonic melodic sequences. This means that there's going to be no chromaticism outside of the key and the repeated pattern is going to revolve around general pitch relationships, not specific note for note transpositions. Let's listen to this example from Paganini. Do you notice in the first system that the melody of the first two measures is repeated down a step in the third and fourth measure? We can compare the first notes of each of those measures to see that the interval is uh, being repeated here at a second. In analysis, we would label the first two measures as the first segment of the sequence, say A, for example, if this is the beginning of our piece, the beginning of our analysis. And then the repeated statement is the second statement of the sequence, so sequence A, segment 2. If there are more repetitions, we can continue on to segment 3 and 4 and so forth. However, it stops here because we have another sequence in the second system. This guy is just one bar in length instead of the two that we saw before. These segments are also repeated down a step, just as we saw in the first sequence. We're going to label these now sequence B, segments 1 and 2, because they're not part of sequence A, but instead their own new sequence. You'll notice, however, that the melodic material for sequence B has been taken from the second measure of our original sequence A and just developed a little bit. This is the technique of using sequences for melodic development, furthering the melodic ideas. Let's listen once more, now that we know what to listen for. Have a listen to this excerpt from Vivaldi's Violin Concerto in F minor. See if you can hear and identify the sequence. Hopefully you noticed the sequencing in all of the voices for one half measure for each segment, including the continual voice. The melodic sequence is most prevalent in the upper voice, however, as we can see the melody sequencing up a step after each segment statement. There are three full statements of each segment, so we can label them sequence A segment 1, sequence A segment 2, and sequence A segment 3 before the sequence is over. Listen once more now with this analysis in mind. Here's another example from Haydn's Symphony No. 1 in D major from the second movement. Listen for the sequences. Observe how the upper string voices sequence in tandem with one another in these measures. The melodies are different enough 
They're not from the same sequence, thus they need two separate labels of three segments each. Each of these sequence segments also move down by step in both voices. Notice how in the upper voice the melody continues on as if it's going to add another segment to the sequence at the end, but is actually truncated. We call this a failed sequence or an aborted sequence. These are worth labeling for reference and completion of your analysis. Let's listen once more with this analysis in mind. Now it's your turn to practice. Take a listen to this song by Fanny Hensel and see if you can identify the sequence. Once you do, see if you can identify the interval of repetition for each segment. <laughs> Pause the video now if you need more time. You should have found these four beat segments with three repetitions. Notice how the piano part is also mirroring this same melody, so it's the same sequence. Here are those sequence segment labels. And what did you find for the interval of repetition? Comparing the first note of each segment, we can see that this sequence is down by a third. This is different than we had seen in previous examples, which were up and down by a second, respectively. Interestingly, you can see that the bass line is also sequenced here, following the same descending third pattern that we saw in the voice melody. Have another listen with this analysis in mind. <laughs> Here's a new task. Try composing the remaining segments of this sequence in G major. Make sure that it descends by step and that you have three more segments when you're done. Pause the video if you need more time. You should have written this eighth note pattern beginning on F sharp, E, and D for the three repeated segments of the original given sequence segment. You can see each segment takes up a half a measure in this example. In previous examples, they have taken up as many as two measures. So we can conclude that the length of the segment doesn't actually matter. Only the repetition and the interval of repetition is what makes it a sequence. So what did we learn in this video? Of the two sequence types, melodic sequences are patterns which are repeated at a specific interval for any number of segmented repetitions. Four is usually the max because it gets a little redundant if we hear too many segments in a row. Most melodic sequences are diatonic or in a key, but sometimes we can see chromatic sequences which preserve the exact intervals of the original segment. Usually, however, the diatonic is more common. As for the interval of repetition, the most common is at the second, so either up a second or down a second, but as we have seen, the third is also possible and common. Sometimes as a means of development, composers will begin another segmented repetition, but abandon it before they complete it. We call this a failed sequence, and they're worth noting in your analysis. We will work together in class to identify and write more sequences, but that's all for this video for now. Thanks for watching.